The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Howdy, Aggieland. Welcome back to the KMU Studios. My name is Hector Nino, and you're listening to The Heart of Art. Today, we have a very special show planned for you. Our first guest will be Brent Maxwell, who is a local oil painter uh, focusing mostly on Texas nature. And he's also a former art teacher of CSISD with 26 years of experience. And we have a great conversation about why he focuses on Texas nature and also how before he was an art teacher, he was a construction worker. So if you're curious to see as to how that played out, I encourage you to stay tuned. And after that, we will be revisiting my interview with Katie Baldock, an interview that I had back in April. And she is a producer for Deep in the Heart, a Texas wildlife story. Uh, so we can continue our conversation about Texas nature. And um, now for the art announcements. I have uh, the University Art Galleries uh, opened an exhibition yesterday, June 2nd, titled Global Vistas. And this exhibition highlights unique art from the university's collection made by artists from all over the world. And this includes works such as uh, a Japanese hunting scene to an Italian mosaic made by a Vatican artisan. So there really is something for everyone in this exhibition. If you want to check out more information, you can go to uart.tamu.edu and you can visit at the J. Wayne Stark Galleries, which is MSC Room 1110. All right, let's start my conversation with Brent Maxwell. Today in the studio, we have a very special show planned for you. Uh, we have a guest here. His name is Brent Maxwell, and he is mainly an oil painter on canvas with a focus on Texas nature. And if you'd like to check out his work, you can go to jbmaxwellart.com while we're having this discussion. And that's jbmaxwellart.com. So, hi, Brent. How are you today? Hey, Hector. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. And actually, uh, an important detail is that, that Brent actually just told me about is that he was a teacher to Shelby Lancaster, who was early on in the show. So that's an interesting little detail that I hope we get to talk about a little more. Um, but here on the show, I'd like to go through the background of my guests before we start. So I know that you're a native Texan, born in Corpus Christi, but where were you raised? Uh, I grew up in Odessa, Texas. Right. It's way out there. Mm -hmm. And did that impact your art in any way? Uh, not so much uh, impacting my art at that time as I was growing up because mm -hmm. it was pretty flat and, to be fair, it was pretty bleak. Uh, yeah. Mostly I got excited about things when I left and moved to places that had trees and water and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be the biggest uh, impact it had. Having gone back now... There are a lot of things in West Texas that I have learned to like uh, and have learned to uh, appreciate through other artists uh, in early Texas art, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good things there. All right. And was that where you started your art career? Like, um, did yes. you have any important teachers in Odessa that really led the way for you to become an artist? Yeah, I uh, started, you know, like... A lot of kids, you know, drawing cartoons and things like that, mm -hmm. drew airplanes and submarines and all that sort of thing, trying to get the perspective. Uh, did a lot of cartoons for people that, uh, you know, had some funny incident they wanted illustrated. And I said, yeah, sure. Um, but uh, I actually started in uh, college, Odessa College. Mm -hmm. Barry Phillips was an uh, instructor I had out there, Delmos Hickmott. And they were both very good. And uh, they encouraged me and challenged me. And, you know, I, I did pretty well in their drawing classes. And uh, it, it became where I like to be more than other classes. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of self-selected uh, into art class. Yeah, you felt yourself gravitating more towards yeah. those. Yeah. 
So would you say that being in college is that moment that you realized that you wanted to do this for your life? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was. at Odessa College. Yeah, Odessa College, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to be like that guy, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the art uh, kind of developed. You kind of develop your skills and get better at it and you go, you know, I can do this, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, you went on to get your BFA and your MFA from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, I was curious, what was your MFA on? Painting. Painting, okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I did. In those days, I did um, focused on materials. Uh, I did, like, I would weave canvas into a chain link fence material, stretch wow. it, put it on the wall, apply a lot of really thick uh, acrylic type paint. And, uh, you know, I left ribbons of, you know, the canvas that, hanging down. And it was, you know, all real nice. It was just, uh, it was hard to install. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of people, you know, probably did not think of that as a uh, positive feature. But uh, anyway, that, that's, that's what I did in uh, grad school there. All right. And, I mean, after that, you went into teaching at public schools. Uh, did you enjoy teaching, or were you just waiting until you could do oh, it? Oh, I love teaching. I yes. love teaching. Okay. Uh, I, I want to back up, though. You left out about 10 years of my life there where oh, I worked yeah. in construction. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I did you, not know about that. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did a lot of construction, and uh, hmm. uh, mostly electrical construction. Uh, and, uh, you know, I worked all over. I worked all over the Austin area, did summers in uh, the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of stuff. And so... You know, physical nature of painting and, and you know, like I say, the chain link material and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, stuff you could put your hands on and work with. Uh, you know, I like that a lot. So now back to the teaching. I go. I started that. I was, I was, you know, a little, little old to be starting teaching. So, you know, it, it took me a while to get going there. But I uh, started down in Pleasanton, got my first job down there. I was spent a year there in a, um, teaching at you know, eighth grade, junior high, real good school, real good kids, uh, loved it a lot, but it was, you know, my wife was living in Buda. I was I'm working in Pleasanton, coming home on weekends. I was basically, you know, paying to teach at that time, you know, having an apartment down there. <laughs> Moved a little closer, worked in Stockdale for three years, another great place, different, you know, but uh, really liked being down there, but again, uh, needed to get, you know, where my wife and I could both, both work in the same town. So I uh, was able to get on at College Station and worked at A&M Consolidated for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was good. Uh, then I w moved to uh, uh, College Station High School for four years. And, and uh, I was there. So did, uh, what, 22 years with the school district here. Did five years out at Blend teaching art history at night, and uh, I enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed teaching art history more when I got the AP classes at mm -hmm. uh, college at Consolidated and uh, College Station, and that was that's a real good experience too. I like that a lot. All right, awesome. Thank you for that. <clears throat> um, so a little more about your art. I know that you focus on nature. Mm -hmm. What was that place that got you hooked on nature and you wanted to paint that? That would be um, Cathedral Mountain. That's out south of uh, Alpine, Texas. And we have, uh, my wife and I have friends who um, own a ranch out there. And take it out there and there's this mountain. It's called Cathedral Mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, as mountains go, it's not a, a really big mountain. But anywhere you go on that ranch, that mountain is looking over your shoulder. And um, it has a very unique look to it, almost, almost an identifiable face. And it's it, it, the people that own the ranch, uh, there's three siblings that uh, own the ranch. Uh, they're really proud of you know, their access to this mountain. And so they were nice enough to let me have access to it. So they, you know, drive me all over. That mountain is different. Every time the sun is different, the mountain is different. Um, you know, clouds make it different. Everything, everything about it is different. 
I have painted this mountain 10 times so far. Wow. I will probably paint it, I'd say at least five or six times more or more, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm okay with that, you know. Yeah. I also, you know, like to paint our good old prickly pear and things like that. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, you're Texan, you gotta do prickly pear. Right. Yeah. yeah, I saw that you had like a whole um, section on your website for the Cathedral Mountain and <laughs> there was plenty to see there. It's a, it's a really neat mountain mm-hmm. and um, it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, of course, I'm not the first artist to paint Cathedral Mountain. It's been going on for, you know, 150 years, I guess. Um, it's interesting to see works uh, by artists that you can find in the, you know, Texas Art Project that's, you know, what's going on here at A&M. Mm-hmm. You'll find uh, some artists that uh, have painted this uh, mountain a few times. And uh, I, I like to think of my connection to these artists uh, just because I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. And... I was curious about your artistic process um, from like the conception of an idea to the finished product. How, how do you get to that? Do you use a picture or do you paint live? Oh, I definitely use picture, photograph. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will, uh, more often these days, I will actually project the things and then paint them, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm, uh, you know, I get it down to uh, where I like to really do a lot of detail work on the, the paintings. Um, it, uh, they're really nice to look at in person and I, I would really, uh, encourage you to do that. In fact, uh, I've got six showing over at the, um, uh, Lake Walk Gallery next to Stella Hotel. Oh, awesome. So they're open, I think, two, uh, Thursdays and Fridays and then it's Saturday morning, nine to 12, you know. Okay, awesome. But, I'd, I'd encourage you to go look at it. They're, they're, they're pretty darn nice, if I do say so. Yeah, yeah I mean, live art is always better <laughs> than, yeah. than yeah. a screen, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I know you document the Southwest, including New Mexico and Colorado. Why focus on landscapes? Why immobilize these moments? Um, I just like some of the images that it, you know, puts out. Or it's, you know, I mean, like that mountain. I mean, it, uh, it I don't know kind of aggrandizing the thing to say it spoke to me that's it's kind of extreme but uh i couldn't ignore it you mm, know yeah. and uh so i i kind of you know when i do my so my reflection and i think well you know you, you kind of need to get some people in here sooner or later but i haven't done it yet except in one painting and the people are at thirty thousand feet in a little jet trail up there but mm. it uh most of the time, mountain, cacti, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It works for me. All right. And another thing I saw on your website was that you aim for classism of Texas images while avoiding nostalgia. I thought this was really interesting because, I mean, usually artists do want, you know, an emotional response from their viewers. Why is this something that you avoid? Emotional response is fine. I just don't want nostalgia necessarily. Mm-hmm. I like to kind of avoid that. Western art is fine. You just don't have to necessarily be nostalgic about it, you know. Hmm. And uh, there's lots of things that are going on contemporary that's just just fine. Yeah. yeah. Would you say you like to focus on the positive emotions rather than the negative yeah. ones? Then yeah. yeah. I, All right. And I see that you also paint people and very well, I, as I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, do you enjoy drawing, um, painting landscapes rather than people? I, I see that you focus right, more on the landscapes. Right now, I'm doing landscapes, and and I like that. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. more. It, it uh, it's just what I prefer to do. Now. I've I've done my time with portraits and oh, you know, okay. <laughs> moving on. You're bored of them. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I've heard a lot of artists that um, shy away from drawing people because it's harder. That it's harder to to draw people than with landscapes or um, maybe the emotions on the face are harder to portray and through a painting. Well, you know. It all gets down to light on surfaces. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you get that, and, you know, you just do your observation, do your measurements, you know, all that sort of thing. And uh, it, uh, I enjoyed, and I enjoyed teaching portraiture, you know, in, in 
high school. You know, mm-hmm. kids kids did pretty well with it. And uh, just right now, I'm doing this. You know, this is a phase that I'm doing at this time of my life, and I'll probably do hopefully one or two more phases. You know, before it's all said and done. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. that's where we're going with that. That's awesome. That you just kind of let the wind <laughs> move you. I, I do images that I like to do. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's. Right now, I'm trying to get these iconic. I want to establish an iconic imagery of some sort mm. that uh, kind of represents our our state. You know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's important to stay true to your likes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, so I know you were also an art history teacher. Are, is there anything interesting that you'd like to teach our audience about? Something that maybe a lot of people don't know about art history. Well, it's it's a big old world out there, and there's a lot of art history. And it, um, what I I actually got interested in art and art history. I started, you know, during the death throes of abstract expressionism, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what I thought I wanted to be at that time. But since then, you know, there's all kinds of things going on, and I, you know, learn. I love the. Uh, Hudson, you know, River School and all that. Uh, but now I'm, I'm kind of interested in early Texas art. And, you know, I'm, this is a good place to be for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's that's kind of what I would encourage people to research that, especially here. Because uh, this university is doing some really good stuff with early Texas art. Oh, yeah. Do you have any favorites within Texas art? Frank Ray, <laughs> mm-hmm. he he did cattle drives way back, and in, 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 he, he's uh, really good. Uh, uh, Tom Lee uh, was out in El Paso. He did murals uh, during the WPA area, and I grew up looking at one of his murals uh, called Stampede there in Odessa, Texas. Uh, it, I cannot convey to you the uh, uh, a Response that it has on a small boy in a you know in the post office, looking up at this stampede, mm-hmm. and um, so Tom Lee is really good. I um, kind of became reacquainted with him with a Texas Monthly article that came out many years ago, and it had a full page picture of a painting he did of his wife, and it was just you know a beautiful painting and. Uh, I said, well, you know, my wife deserves a painting like that. So I did one of my wife, which she's real happy with. I'm real happy with. And uh, it, uh, anyway, the the name of it comes from a Ry Cooter song. It's called That's the Way the Girls Are in Texas, which if you listen to the Ry Cooter song, you you know you really don't want to mess with the girls in Texas. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway. That's uh, that's where I got going on doing the portraits and all that, and uh, we we still have that painting in our it's uh, in our dining room, and she makes her brother sit across from it <laughs> when he comes to visit <laughs> so to see it. <laughs> he has to he has awesome. to see it. Is that the one with the with the red seat? And the Jeep. the Jeep on the side? Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Done your research. That was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering what the the golden glow around her head represented. That's a halo. She's a saint. Mm-hmm. It was the way you view her. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yes. I mean, that's wonderful that you can share your your talent in this way to show the, your loved ones that you do love them. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a it, I think it's a really good painting. Mm-hmm. She, it is. Li- she likes it. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, do you have any advice for uh, any new artists? Um, work. Work all the time. Um, have have faith in yourself. You know, you, you are going to get better. Uh, even if you're, if you already think you're the world's greatest, you are going to get better. Uh, but it, you know, requires work. Um, just, you know, have faith in yourself and work, you know, carry on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you're a great example of also just following your own 
your own instincts and your own likes, you know, and I think that's really important for an artist as well. There's, a, there's no other reason to do it as far as I, I can tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Is there something about you, your art specifically that you'd like to share with our audience that maybe we haven't spoken about yet? Well, we, we've spoken that feel like you need to see it in person. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, there are some, I have six images uh, over at the Lake Walk Gallery. Um, they need to be seen in person. I, and I, I really think that you see them in person, uh, you'll be impressed. Um, if not, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm real pleased with my work. I think I'm pretty good at this. Um, and I do want to, uh, repeat that I very much enjoyed teaching and I was really excited to hear about Shelby Mm -hmm. and give her a shout out. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Hi, Shelby. (laughs) And, uh, anyway, that, that, that was a, that was a really nice moment when I heard her interview and thought, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Shelby actually speaks about a moment in which they visited a Houston art museum and uh, she was moved to tears by one of the works that she saw there. And it really motivated her um, to become an artist. So, I mean, that's the type of work that you're doing, Brent, here. Well, being a a public school teacher, um, I'm sure you've impacted a lot of lives. So thank you so much for that. Well, I I hope I've impacted one or two. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least, at least one or two. We know that for sure. (laughs) Yeah. If if not, I hope I didn't make it worse. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All righty, Brent. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to me about this. I I learned so much and I'm excited to see where your art goes. You know, thank you. And I really appreciate you uh, inviting me in to do this. Of course. And I encourage everyone to go check out this live um, gallery at Lake Walk, right? Yeah. Lake Walk. All right. All right, you guys, we will be going on a quick break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back. And welcome back to the KMU Studios. Now we will be revisiting my interview with Katie Baldock. Today in the studios, we have a very special guest. She is an Aggie, class of 2017. Her name is Katie Baldock. And she is a producer for Deep in the Heart, a Texas wildlife story. And this is directed and written by Ben Masters and narrated by the Matthew McConaughey. So hi, Katie. Welcome to the studios. How are you? I'm good. How about you? How are you doing? I'm really excited for a conversation. You know, I... um. I had the pleasure of seeing your previous experience with The River and the Wall, which was amazing, and I, I've heard it won a lot of awards. Um, so, yeah, do you think that prepared you for, for this Deep in the Heart documentary? Um, yeah, absolutely. I first came on and started working with Thin and Fur um, for The River and the Wall project, and I was an associate producer for that film. Um, and yeah, after after wrapping up the river and the wall, kind of grew into the producer role for Deep in the Heart, and um, a lot of a lot of the work on the river and the wall prepared me for um, the producer work for Deep in the Heart. All right, awesome. Uh, and before we go into Deep in the Heart, I did want to ask a little bit of you, your background and your personal story and how you got to where you are. Um, so I wanted to ask, where are you from, and did your love for nature begin there? Um, yeah, so I'm from Nacogdoches in East Texas. Um, it's pretty close to the Louisiana border. Um, so I've been in Texas my entire life, uh, from Nacogdoches to College Station and now to Austin. Um, and I, I would say that my love for nature did develop there. Um, my love for, uh, outdoor recreation um, was really with a lot of family trips out west, uh, mainly in Colorado and New Mexico. Um, but I grew up on, uh, my parents have a small farm in East Texas and so grew up um, out of the city and definitely um, appreciated uh, being around the trees and animals and um, yeah, definitely developed a love for nature there. All right. And did you um, acquire love for nature first or was it photography first or when did you know uh, filming nature come about um yeah I would say that 
interest in nature and photography kind of coincided with each other. Um, I was always interested in photography throughout high school, but never really started taking photos until um, until I was in college and started working with the Aggieland yearbook. Um, but uh, and I I took a lot of photos of you know, working with the yearbook, um, took a lot of photos of events and people, but my interest primarily was always um, animals, nature. Uh, I really enjoyed landscapes. Um, you know, first time, whenever I got my very first camera, I just uh, would take a bunch of pictures of our family dog. And um, yeah, I was was definitely more interested in, in uh, nature and landscapes. So what do you think is the importance of documenting wildlife, specifically in Texas or uh, through the deep deep in the heart, what point of view do you take? Is it conservational or what would you say? Um, yeah, so the, the primary purpose is to get awareness out there and encourage people to appreciate it and hopefully as a result feel compelled to get involved in conservation practices. Um, but a, a huge inspiration of this film was, um, you know, some of the key team members, our director, Ben Masters, director of photography, Skip Hobby. Um, they they grew up watching these uh, natural history films on National Geographic, you know, Discovery, PBS. And there's all these incredible wildlife stories um, that you see and learn about across the world. Uh, you know, places like the Serengeti and in British Columbia. But um, really, we we have so many incredible stories here in Texas, and it's easy to forget that those really cool things happen so close to home. And you don't have to travel out of the country or even out of the state to see some incredible things. Um, obviously, you're going to get very different landscapes and wildlife here than you would get in the Arctic, but it's really incredible nonetheless. Um, so I think the the main goal and purpose was really to get people to realize that there's so much beauty and diversity here in our state. Um, just the, the biodiversity is really incredible. When you go from East Texas to Central Texas to West Texas, it's this, you know, convergence of different landscapes in the country and um, very different ecosystems. Um, so we wanted to showcase that and showcase how many different incredible stories are here in the same state. And, you know, if people know that it's there and also know what's at stake and what challenges and threats these ecosystems and wildlife species are facing, then they can feel compelled to take action. And beyond just creating that awareness, having the film, um, we wanted to give people the resources to take action. So we have um, an action page on our website that lists a ton of organizations across the state um, that really, you know, kind of gives people the, the resources and the push that, uh, that they may need to be able to get involved in that. I'm Hector Nino, and you've been listening to The Heart of Art, a production of 90.9 KAMU-FM. You can find all of our shows anytime at kamu.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu.